So today's uh, victim, Retina 2, type uh, 011. You can tell that from the 014 because the 014 has a film reminder dial around the rewind. And the 011 does not. Anything unusual about this one? Well, it's a bit less common. This has got the Kodak Ecta 47mm lens and that's a little bit less common. Uh, sought after by collectors, whether it's a better lens than the Schneider Xenons, that's debatable, but it adds a bit of interest. So there we have it. Anything else? Well the, the shutter hasn't been synced for flash, so it hasn't been buggered around with. Um, that's always a bonus. And the problems with this camera, well the focus is pretty dry. Um, it does work relatively smoothly, but it's quite dry. The shutter release is very, very sticky. We roll this round, that's cocked. That arm sticks down, it's very, uh, very annoying. So it certainly all needs to be cleaned out. The film advance, well that's pretty straightforward, there's nothing serious, no, usually not many serious problems with that, except this. This is chewed off, someone has managed to snap the top off this film spool. Um, I can see by the munch marks that they've probably had a pair of pliers or something in there trying to get the knob off and they have buggered it up and they've broken the spool off and it looks like the remains of a bit of glue here so they've had a go at gluing that piece back on the spool um, with no success. So the take up spool is um, going to need to be replaced. That's a liability running, running one like that. You'll likely to have the film not track correctly and end up jamming up so that'll have to be replaced apart from that it's quite a tidy example um, the surface there's yeah, a bit of corrosion on the surface spotting and so forth um, that some of that will clean up some of it will not basically the chrome's gone it's not going to come back so into it let's open this thing up I'll start with the rewind knob, put something through the forks of the rewind knob and then that just unscrews. The take up spool, I've got a spanner here ground away so it'll fit the flats on that take up shaft. And if I rotate this clockwise it unscrews. On the top of the shutter release there, we need to get that button loose. That'll do it. And then the top cover is only held on with two screws, one at each end. Take care not to slip with your screwdriver. You don't want to mar the screws which are only chrome brass and you don't want to slip off and mar the top cover because you'll be regretting that forever. So I'll cock the shutter again, advance the film advance until it locks, hold down the shutter release as far as it will go, lift the top cover back off over the back of the rewind lever, and there's our top cover off. No great fight there. And start taking pieces off. Well, that's our frame counter, it's got a spring underneath it, don't lose the spring. I'll remove the range finder while I'm here. Two screws. The range finder is very much the same as that seen on a Retina 2A camera. Same design. Some of the early ones had slightly different uh, features. just construction differences really. Take those screws out. Here's our range finder. You'd be hard pressed to tell that from a Retina 2A except for the frame around the front of the glass here. Um, that's obviously slightly different. This is quite sticky. Doesn't want to return to the infinity position. Quite hazy. 
but it should clean up okay. Back to the body. Or well, while we're working at this end of the camera, I suppose we can have the rewind shaft and bush out of the top of the camera. Those screws are tight. With old cameras like this, I mean, you can guarantee the screws are one of two things. They're either too loose or they're too tight. They're never just right. So I want to get this off. Here we've got the the wheel for setting the frame counter. So I'll release its spring. And I can instantly see that the mounting, the screw here on the mount has been um, chewed up. Someone's made a mess of that. Not even sure how you go about doing that. Take that little baffle off. The shutter release shaft. Well, I'm just going to have a quick look and see if there's a spacer washer in here or anything of that nature. I can't really tell. I need to release this. I'll hold back that lever. I can lift this out. And there's no spring on here as there would be with a retina too, eh? This gear on the top here, this is this is what uh, sets the the shutter release and so forth. Get that screw out from there. Take that off. Here, just unhook that spring. Take this screw out. Now these levers, yeah, they're stacked up. So watch the order that everything comes out at. I'm taking away the screw, taking away the next lever, taking away the lever under that. Then there's a washer. Then there's this lever. And then there's a the smaller plain washer. Take note of where they came from so that they'll go back in the right place. Here. So I want that, that spacer off the top there. So I'll have to find the correct pair of pliers to do that, I think. So here I've got a pair of pliers that were a circlet pliers once upon a time in their life. They're not anymore. I'll get this spanner on top of that take up shaft, I can get it in there, to stop that shaft from rotating, and if I rotate this clockwise it should come loose. And it doesn't want to. Someone has done a job on this. That's better. It's left hand threaded of course that one, as is the advance knob. Yeah, I can just tell that that thread's a little bit stretched. It just ran a little bit tight as it was coming apart. Here's our rewind lever. Here's our little ratchet set that controls the rewind and the advance. That looks okay, that's not damaged. Sometimes the teeth on that are a bit burred over, particularly on the rewind side where people have attempted to rewind the film without setting the lever across to the rewind position. And there are other ways you can bugger that up too if you uh, go about doing things in the wrong way. Just take these three screws out from the top of the bush for the film advance. Now there's two springs here, front and rear. They look much the same, they are not identical. 
make sure they go back in the right places when you put it back together this one here is probably just as hard to get loose no that one was, wasn't a fight All right, you can take out the take up the film advance shaft there. Now that's a bit tight on the bush. Uh, just dirt, I think, and dried grease causing that. I can take out our broken film take up spool. You can see the tops chewed off there. I'm going to have to find a replacement for that one. Close the front for a second. Now this piece here. This is the sprocket shaft. Generally you don't need to take this apart if it runs nice and smoothly. If there's dust or grit or so forth in there, yes you can take it apart. And basically the shaft just runs down from the top, through the body, through this top piece here, and this little roller piece at the bottom here. And these two pieces are held on with grub screws, which are quite small and they either locate into little holes in the shaft which locks them very securely or in some examples they don't they, they just the screws just bind up tight on the shaft and they're a little bit less wonderful um, they can work close what else do we need to do here the bottom of the camera I'll need to get this leather up so I need these pieces off get the leather off and we can take the hinge pins out lift the door off the front let's try this screwdriver this is our depth of field scale this one's in English so it was made for the export market you see depth of field scales in, in English German and occasionally in French. I don't know of any any other languages. Let's get this surround off here, which doesn't want to come off. This is the surround from the tripod socket. Sometimes these are reluctant to come off. And it'll be because someone has forced a unsuitable tripod fixing screw into the socket. Typically one that's a bit conical towards the base of the thread. And they wind until they get there. And it just stretches it out. If it's mushroomed out, I can see marks all over that. If it's mushroomed out, then it's very hard to get a piece like this, which is a fairly neat fit, oh, loose from it. Right, see if I can get under the leather and strip the leather off the base of the camera. Oh yes, that's um, coming off very easily indeed, as you can see. Uh, that glue's completely let go from the bottom of the camera. It does look like shellac or something of that nature. We'll see what I can do about cleaning that up. The tripod socket here, held in with three screws. Commonly on retinas, this works loose, and it works loose because screws work loose anyway and other times it works loose because it's been overstressed. Now those screws were all done up very tight so I'm not going to get them off. Um, there's no need to get them off. Um, they can stay where they are. To take the door off the front, two screws. One forms the pivot pin or the hinge pin at the base one at the top there may be a spacer washer at the top or the bottom there's a washer there I think that's not from the door actually, that's from something else, which I'll tell you about in a second. I'm going to lift, stretch this door up and lift it off over its track. 
Here's another washer. I'll put that door to one side. This is a little bit of corrosion visible here. Uh, suggests to me damp storage more than splash damage, but you can never be quite sure. A little bit of corrosion on the base plate. And I notice that the leather is loose here too. So I'll have to see if I can get that leather off entirely, uh, clean it and glue it back down again. I'll check the leather on the other side of the front panel. That's much more firm. Um, so I think that might want to come off too. The back, the leather's flapping a bit. But it's pretty good fit. So here I'm just going to peel back this piece at this end, on the catch end, and glue that back. Um, it's not loose at all on the other end, and there's no advantage in stripping it off. It's, there's always a danger that you'll end up tearing something if you remove leather, or leatherette, or even just damage the finish to some extent. So the body is pretty much stripped down as far as I need it to be. So really I need to remove my retainer ring from the shutter. So I'm going to try this particular spanner and see if that's a good fit. That's a fairly snug fit around the outside of the rear lens group so it doesn't drop down into the slots of the retainer ring very well. It's quite stiff. Here's the shutter, loose from the body, the retainer ring, let's get that out, have a quick look at that, a bit grubby with uh, grease I would think, but not too bad, it has quite a stack of uh, spaces on there, shims, and here we're down to the body, let's, let's have a look at this. Well that focus mount, as you can probably see there, is very, very stained looking. It looks like dried oil to me, so that's where all the grease has gone. I'll start removing that. I'll start here by removing the pin for coupling to the rangefinder. And then there's two small screws hold this front ring on the inner helical and they're very short screws those ones that ring should come off if I wriggle it out and here we've got the focus helical and focus scale ring Have a quick look at that shutter. No. <coughs> there is a screw here on the back of the shutter which locates in this notch here on that retainer ring. It's not present on all cameras. It's fortunately it's here. It makes it much easier to set the shutter in the correct position and be confident it's not going to go away from that position. So first what I'm going to do is scribe a line from my focus scale ring across to the outer helical and I'm putting two there on the bottom of the camera and one at the top because that allows me to tell which way up I've got my focus helical when I go to reassemble it. 
I've slacken off the four screws that hold the focus scale ring to the outer helical. They look like they're brass, but really they're nickel plated. The golden colour is from the dried grease. Lift that off. I'm just looking at the marks on the focus scale ring here where the screw heads had bitten into it. Yeah, they're all right. I thought they might be might be further round from where I'd taken the scale ring off, but they look okay. Six screws hold the retainer ring in place for this focus mount. Countersunk head screws, typically the same as the four screws that held the focus scale ring in place. Um, if the screw heads are damaged, you need to make sure that the ones holding the focus scale ring in place are the best of the screws. And the ones holding this retainer plate in place, if they're a little bit damaged looking, it won't cause you any bother. So I'll lift out the inner and outer helical and I'll just rotate those together until I have the front surfaces dead flat and level. And then I'm going to mark it. So that when I put it back together, I put it back in exactly the same position. That's good there. That's very stiff. So I'm just going to extend my lines that I'd marked on the outer helical across to the inner helical oh, it's extremely stiff that's just completely gummed up with um, dried out grease a bit of a mess really so back to the camera Four black screws here hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. That's very tight, it might be going to snap off. The plate in the bellows that these screws go back to is steel. Um, the screws are steel. And they can rust in place. If there's, you know, the camera's been wet at some stage. So three of those screws are loose. This one here is a bit suspect. I'm just going to apply a bit more force to that. So I'll collapse the bellows so I don't bend stuff. See if that screw will come out. Yes, it is. It's unscrewing. I thought that might be going to uh, just twist the top off. Which, of course, is entertaining. Right, the bellows have fallen away from the back now. Yeah, it's lots of fun if you've got to drill out one of those screws. They're about oh, one and a half millimetres, something like that. And it's just like getting a stripped out or snapped off bolt or stud out of an engine block except much much smaller right so I'll just pop these four screws that held the bellows out of there here's the focus mount itself that is completely caked in very very dried grease that grease uh, sets very hard very like, like a hard dry wax really I want these struts out of here now. They're probably slightly bent, they usually are. One screw at the top here, it's a post. It acts as a spring post for the frame counter setting wheel. So it's a, an odd shape compared to the others. And at the base of the camera is one here
that his screw slot is clogged with glue and I think a spot of solvent on there might help loosen that up slightly just fold that up there are two here in the film cassette chamber None of those screws want to come loose, so a touch of solvent and a hammer, I think, might be the answer. Let's start with this screw here. Let's put a little touch of naphtha on there. And taking my favourite old damaged screwdriver. You can't see anything, can you? All right. We'll use it like an impact driver, give it a couple of taps, it screws loose. And in the film cassette chamber, the same thing really, you won't be able to see that, I'm just going to take this away and hold the camera between my knees. You're a bit reluctant. They did come loose. That should be it. Can lift out the struts. They're filthy, a um, little bit of corrosion, and probably a little bit bent, nothing, nothing unexpected. And here's the return spring. Make sure you don't lose that. And that's about all that needs to come out. But what I'm doing now is I'm looking very closely at the state of the bellows to see if there's any sign at all that those bellows might be coming adrift from the baseball from the back of the casting and yes they are so these bellows you look as I'm speaking that they're just coming away in my fingers there they go oh. I had to put almost no tension on that at all and what's, what you can see here is corrosion that is set up underneath the glue layer and basically it's just um, let go from the body so all of that corrosion and glue has got to be scraped off the casting get that back to clean metal remove the rubbish from here and then glue that back in place the bellows themselves look fine but they certainly were going to cause a problem if not immediately then probably about five minutes after the customer unpacked it once the camera was home again so sometimes it pays to investigate a bit deeper than you might want to let's get this corrosion off here and you're using a screwdriver tip to uh, scrape that rubbish away it's just white uh, chalky looking stuff it'll be some corrosion product of aluminium I suppose you can see I'm scraping that back to clean metal there and here a little bit different that's actually a layer of paper off the back of the bellows that was still stuck fairly well but of course I can't trust the adhesive that's holding it um, it's might be sticking well today but some stage in the next decade it might have decided it was its turn to uh, fall loose so there we have it there that's all off you can possibly see the color of this this is a like a dark brown color that's like a that'll be the shellac 
where it was glued on and it's just letting go that's just got no hold on that painted surface at all and probably the same here as I run the screwdriver tip across it it's just flaking off another stray washer oh yeah I know what that is we had two of those there's one of those top and bottom of the struts where they fit into the body okay let's start a little bit more stripped down I want to get this leather off here next <laughs> 